You're not as worried about this disruption and the, the impact. What do you think is the worst case for America? Well, I do agree with what Phil said here, but the worst case scenario is that Yemen, Egypt, um, other countries, Sudan, potentially Algeria, uh, maybe even on the Arabian Peninsula, Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or the UAE, that some of these countries could follow. That's our worst case scenario. Egypt only produces about 685,000 barrels a day, most of which it uses itself. Only 3% goes through it, but right next door to it are millions of barrels, 20% of the world's daily oil supply right there in the petroleum gulf. So, Phil, tell me, what is the worst case for U.S. oil and gas prices? I mean, Peter hit it the nail on the head. I mean, if we get into some of these other countries like uh, Saudi Arabia, if we see these uprisings spread, I mean, we could be talking all-time highs on oil, $1.50 very easily. We could be talking over $4 a gallon uh, for gasoline. Uh, you know, but this could go the other way as well. You know, we could see uh, this uh, create democracy in the region, more stability, and that could actually lower prices. So that, you know, it depends on how this plays out. And we really don't know at this point. We can talk about all the doomsday scenarios, and, and there's quite a lot of them. Uh, but you really have to watch this on a daily basis. Uh, and, and its impact on energy and the economy overall uh, can be huge. I mean, this is a larger story, too. Why is this all happening? It's happening because uh, inflation is rampant throughout the globe. And it's not just confined to Egypt or Tunisia, which, which really started this. Uh, it, it's throughout the entire area. And if it looks like we've had another successful, uh, peaceful change in government, some of these other countries are going to say, hey, what, maybe it's our turn. Maybe it's time for us uh, to have an uprising. And, and, and then, of course, you could really change the face of the entire world.